June 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Kings chapters 5 and 6 from the Old Testament. Now Naaman, the commander of the king of Syria's army, was esteemed and respected by his master. For through him the Lord had given Syria military victories. But this great warrior had a skin disease. Raiding parties went out from Syria and took captive from the land of Israel a young girl, who became a servant to Naaman's wife. She told her mistress, If only my master were in the presence of the prophet who is in Samaria, then he would cure him of his skin disease. Naaman went and told his master what the girl from the land of Israel had said. The king of Syria said, Go, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten suits of clothes. He brought the letter to king of Israel. It read, This is a letter of introduction for my servant Naaman whom I have sent to be cured of his skin disease. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God? Can I kill or restore life? Why does he ask me to cure a man of his skin disease? Certainly you must see that he is looking for an excuse to fight me. When Elisha the prophet heard that the king had torn his clothes, he sent this message to the king. Why did you tear your clothes? Send him to me, so he may know there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood in the doorway of Elisha's house. Elisha sent out a messenger who told him, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan. Your skin will be restored and you will be healed. Naaman went away angry. He said, Look, I thought for sure he would come out, stand there, invoke the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the area, and cure the skin disease. The rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and Farpah are better than any of the waters of Israel. Could I not wash in them and be healed? So he turned around and went away angry. His servants approached and said to him, O oh master, if the prophet had told you to do some difficult task, you would have been willing to do it. It seems you should be happy that he simply said, Wash, and you will be healed. So he went down and dipped in the Jordan seven times, as the prophet had instructed. His skin became as smooth as the young child's, and he was healed. He and his entire entourage returned to the prophet. Naaman came and stood before him. He said, For sure I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now please accept a gift from your servant. But Elisha replied, As certainly as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will take nothing from you. Naaman insisted that he take it, but he refused. Naaman said, If not, then please your servant a load of dirt, enough for a pair of mules to carry, for your servant will never again offer a burnt offering or sacrifice to a god other than the Lord. May the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. When my master enters the temple of Rimmon to worship, and he leans on my arm and I bow down in the temple of Rimmon, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. Elisha said to him, Go in peace. When he had gone a short distance, Gehazi, the prophet Elisha's servant, thought, Look, my master did not accept what the Syrian Naaman offered him. As certainly as the Lord lives, I will run after him and accept something from him. So Gehazi ran after Naaman. When Naaman saw someone running after him, he got down from his chariot to meet him and ask, Is everything all right? He answered, Everything is fine. My master sent me with this message. Look, two servants of the prophets just arrived from the Ephraimite hill country. Please give them a talent of silver and two suits of clothes. Naaman said, Please accept two talents of silver. He insisted and tied up two talents of silver in two bags, along with two suits of clothes. He gave them to two of his servants, and they carried them for Gehazi. When he arrived at the hill, he took them from the servants and put them in the house. Then he sent the men on their way. When he came and stood before his master, Elisha asked him, Where have you been, Gehazi? He answered, Your servant hasn't been anywhere. Elisha replied, I was there in spirit when a man turned and got down from his chariot to meet you. 
This is not a proper time to accept silver or to accept clothes, olive groves, vineyards, sheep, cattle, and male and female servants. Therefore, Naaman's skin disease will afflict you and your descendants forever. When Gehazi went out from his presence, his skin was as white as snow. Some of the prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too cramped for us. Let's go to the Jordan. Each of us will get a log from there, and we will build a meeting place for ourselves there. He said, Go. One of them said, Please come along with your servants. He replied, All right, I'll come. So he went with them. When they arrived at the Jordan, they started cutting down trees. As one of them was felling a log, the axe head dropped into the water. He shouted, Oh no, my master, it was borrowed. The prophet asked, Where did it drop in? Then he showed him the spot. Elisha cut off a branch, threw it in at the spot, and made the axe head float. He said, Lift it out. So he reached out his hand and grabbed it. Now the king of Syria was at war with Israel. He consulted his advisors who said, Invade at such and such a place. But the prophet sent this message to the king of Israel. Make sure you don't pass through this place because Syria is invading there. So the king of Israel sent a message to the place the prophet had pointed out, warning it to be on its guard. This happened on several occasions. This made the king of Syria upset. So he summoned his advisors and said to them, One of us must be helping the king of Israel. One of his advisors said, No, my master, O king, the prophet Elisha, who lives in Israel, keeps telling the king of Israel the things you say in your bedroom. The king ordered, Go find out where he is, so I can send some men to capture him. The king was told he is in Dothan. So he sent horses and chariots there, along with a good-sized army. They arrived during the night and surrounded the city. The prophet's attendant got up early in the morning. When he went outside, there was an army surrounding the city, along with horses and chariots. He said to Elisha, Oh no, my master, what will we do? He replied, Don't be afraid, for our side outnumbers them. Then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes so he can see. The Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw that the hill was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. As they approached him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, Strike these people with blindness. The Lord struck them with blindness as Elisha requested. Then Elisha said to them, This is not the right road or city. Follow me, and I will lead you to the man you're looking for. He led them to Samaria. When they had entered Samaria, Elisha said, O oh Lord, open their eyes so they can see. The Lord opened their eyes and they saw that they were in the middle of Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elisha, Should I strike them down, my master? He replied, Do not strike them down. You did not capture them with your sword or bow. So what gives you the right to strike them down? Give them some food and water so they can eat and drink and then go back to their master. So he threw a big banquet for them and they ate and drank. Then he sent them back to their master. After that, no Syrian raiding parties again invaded the land of Israel. Later, King Ben-Hadad of Syria assembled his entire army and attacked and besieged Samaria. Samaria's food supply ran out. They laid siege to it so long that a donkey's head was selling for 80 shekels of silver and a quarter of a cab of dove's droppings for five shekels of silver. While the king of Israel was passing by on the city wall, a woman shouted to him, Help us, my master, O king. He replied, No, let the Lord help you. How can I help you? The threshing floor and wine press are empty. Then the king asked her, What's your problem? She answered, this woman said to me, Hand over your son. We'll eat him today and then eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. Then I said to her the next day, Hand over your son and we'll eat him. But she hid her son. When the king heard what the woman said, he tore his clothes. As he was passing by on the wall, the people could see he was wearing sackcloth under his clothes. Then he said, May God judge me severely if Elisha, 
son of Shaphat, still has his head by the end of the day. Now Elisha was sitting in his house with the community leaders. The king sent a messenger on ahead, but before he arrived, Elisha said to the leaders, Do you realize this assassin intends to cut off my head? Look, when the messenger arrives, shut the door and lean against it. His master will certainly be right behind him. He was still talking to them when the messenger approached and said, Look, the Lord is responsible for this disaster. Why should I continue to wait for the Lord to help? God, I was just thinking about um, what Naaman goes through with Elisha. The other day, I have I have a couple different friends <laughs> who are doing the whole can't see the forest for the trees thing. And I've just been thinking about this a lot, so it's just kind of uh, your perfect timing when the story of Elisha and Naaman came up where Naaman's like, I, I just thought Elisha would do this. And Elisha's like, no, I need you to go to the river. I need you to do this seven times. I need you to do this. And Naaman's like, yeah, but this is what this looks like to me, so it's not going to work. Uh, he kind of throws a fit. And, and I have friends right now who are picking out pieces of the Bible and and either delving into them or picking them apart. And it's good. At least they're at least they're reading your word, God. But honestly, these parts of the puzzle aren't the, the important parts. Uh, I guess it would be sort of like main theology, what we all need to get an agreement on <laughs> for what your followers need to know. And then the kind of the secondary uh, tertiary type of theology or doctrine. And they're skipping that primary theology of your love, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, your son dying on the cross for the forgiveness of our forgiveness of our sins, you giving us freedom, eternal life, all of those those things that are primarily what you are about. Now every single word in the Bible is important to us. That's why you gave it to us. So I'm not saying understanding what the kings in the Old Testament really meant. I'm not saying that that's not important. But honestly, we've got to get the big picture first of understanding who you are, what you are to us, why you even created us. We've got to get that stuff right before we start delving into some of these other things and, and completely missing the reason that you you sent your son back to earth to die for the forgiveness of our sins. We completely miss the point of how much you love us. We completely, completely miss the point of your grace. If all we're wanting to do is argue or discuss or tear apart or figure out bits and pieces of the Bible that for the most part aren't the primary reason why we follow you. So God, today I just pray that no matter in what form you come to us, whether it's something simple uh, or something complicated, you know, part of Elisha and Naaman's whole conversation, that no matter how you come to us, it's a learning time. It's a learning of what that relationship looks like to you and how we can uh, grow in that relationship. We can grow deeper in that relationship. And as we grow deeper in that relationship, God, I know that you start to fill in the blanks. You start to teach us about that period of history and why certain things are said and why certain things aren't said. Uh, you start to teach us about the relationships of the people. But we've got to get our relationship with you down first. That is the most important part of all of this. And then everything else will fall into place. God, today I just ask that you help us get our priorities straight of what this looks like and how you want to participate in our lives and more more importantly how you want us to glorify you while we're here on earth in your son's name i pray amen <music>